Chase, Mr. Klein here with our first lesson of our chapter on chemical reactions. This lesson we're going to talk about chemical reactions. So let's go ahead and let's get started. Now chemical reactions of course are really really cool. I mean where else could you drop a gummy bear into a liquid and you have this sort of thing happen to it. Smoke and fire and things like that. Why does that happen? Well that's because of a chemical reaction. So let's go ahead and let's get started with our notes. What is a chemical reaction? Like I said, we learned in our last chapter about identifying chemical changes. Okay, if you remember, a chemical change is just another term for a chemical reaction. Okay, or the process in which a substance changes into another substance. So, chemical changes to review are when substances are created from other substances, which is pretty cool. I mean, if not, uh, that doesn't happen, you're stuck with just a physical change. Okay, so a chemical change is a chemical reaction, the exact same thing. The process in which one substance changes into another substance. So, without chemical reactions, many things we know would not exist. After all, the sun, which is the source of all energy in the solar system and on planet Earth pretty much, it's powered by chemical reactions. The fusion of hydrogen into helium. Cooking and digesting food, what you need to have energy in the run. And even the computer used to create this lesson and... The energy needed to run whatever it is you're watching this video on. That's caused by chemical reactions. So without chemical reactions, we wouldn't have anything. So let's go ahead and let's create our uh, graphic organizer. We're going to answer five questions with this. So chemical reactions, what are they? Well, they're the process in which the substance changes into another substance. So let's go ahead and let's get this set up. Okay, so I know you have that. And let's look into the parts of a chemical reaction. There's really just two parts of a chemical reaction, two basic parts. It's kind of like a math problem where you have two things uh, on either side of an equal sign. The first thing are the reactants. The reactants are the substances that start a chemical reaction. They are the substances that you have before the chemical reaction begins. Whatever it is that you're going to combine or you're going to tear apart in your chemical reaction, those are the reactants. On the other side of the chemical reaction, what you're making, and those are the products. The products are the substances that are formed because of a chemical reaction. So whatever happens, heat, everything, the new substances that are made, those are the products. You can write a chemical reaction using the following format. The reaction, the reactants rather, then there's the arrow. The arrow sign tells you which direction that the chemical reaction forms creates the products. Now, it's important to know that just because you have the chemical reaction written down, it's that chemical reactions occur at different rates. Baking soda and vinegar react as soon as they touch, but it takes years for bronze to fully tarnish. So just because you have the chemical reaction written down in the form of a chemical equation doesn't tell you anything about the amount of time. So let's go ahead and let's look at this real quick. Uh, just as a review, we have the reactants, the direction the, uh, it moves, and the products. The substances that go into the reaction are the reactants, and the substances that are made by the reaction are the products. So let's go ahead, and what we're going to do now is we're going to put the second part of our chemical reaction organizer, the parts of a chemical reaction. You have the reactants, and you have the products. The next thing uh, is obviously what we, our last chapter we talked about chemical bonds. And what do chemical bonds have to do with chemical reaction? Well, it's everything. Chemical bonds are actually formed as a result of a chemical reaction. And whenever you have compounds and you want them to be used in a chemical reaction, they have to be broken in order for the elements to rearrange themselves or the process of the chemical reaction. Now, once the elements are free and in independent atoms, they can form new sets of chemical bonds and as a result create the substances that make up the products. So chemical bonds have everything to do with chemical reactions. You have to break apart the chemical bonds and the reactants and then you have to create new chemical bonds to form the products. So let's go ahead and let's add this to our third part of our chemical reaction organizer. What about chemical bonds? Well, they're broken during the reaction and formed in the products. With our next thing, you might be wondering, well, can you reverse a chemical reaction? I mean, sometimes we do things and it's a mistake. Can we, like, undo our mistakes? Can we, like, tie shoes and untie them? Like, is it kind of like that with chemical reactions? Actually, chemical reactions can occur in opposite directions. For instance, you can take two parts of hydrogen, one part of oxygen, apply some energy, and form water molecules. Water molecules are not permanently bonded. Okay, the chemical bonds that hold them together are not permanent. 
So, because what happens is when you can apply electricity to water, the electrical energy breaks the bonds and the water breaks back into hydrogen and oxygen atoms. So, in other words, the chemical reaction creates water can be reversed. You can apply energy to hydrogen and oxygen to make water, or you can apply energy to water and create uh, hydrogen and oxygen. As you can see right here, this is electrolysis. Okay, so the bubbles are actually the hydrogen and oxygen. Well, which one's hydrogen, which one's oxygen? Well, look at the size difference. You see the one with the little bit of gas being formed? Well, that's oxygen, and the one with the larger is hydrogen because two H's and one O. Remember H2O? That's a good way to know the difference between the two. So let's go ahead and let's ask, add this, asking the question, are chemical reactions reversible? With enough energy, any reaction can actually be reversed. Okay, sometimes it takes a whole lot of energy, some not too much. Finally, what are some signs of a chemical reaction? Just like earlier this year we talked about the four signs of a chemical change, the four exact four signs of a chemical change are the four signs of a chemical reaction. Frozen ice melting into liquid water, remember, isn't a chemical change because it's still water. So four common signs of a chemical reaction as such. First off, it's a change in color. The products are a different color than the reactants. Okay, so the reactants can be clear. You pour them both together, something a different color comes. That's a sign of a chemical reaction. Next would be a change in temperature. We'll talk later about exothermic and endothermic reactions, but usually a change in temperature is an excellent sign of a chemical reaction, whether heat's being absorbed or released. The third thing is the production of a gas. You saw the gas bubbles in the electrolysis reaction. Well, that is obviously a sign of a chemical change. And finally, the production of a solid. When you put together different liquids together, a solid forms a result of the reaction. And just as a review, this is known as what we call a precipitate. Okay? And what I'm going to show you right here is the precipitate. So look, there's one substance two substances, instantly it turns yellow, and it's a solid. So you have two signs of a chemical change there. Okay, You have a change in color, it goes from clear to yellow, and also a solid forms as a result from two liquids. So there you go. Um, we'll add our final thing to our graphic organizer, the signs of a reaction, change in color, change in temperature, gas bubbles, and precipitate. So there you go. That's chemical reactions as a beginning, just a summary of it. The process in which a substance changes into another substance. You have the reactants and products that in the process chemical bonds are broken and reformed. And then we, with enough energy you can reverse it. And then we have some pretty easy signs that we can see and we can identify what chemical reactions are. So there you go. That's your lesson. This is the first one of the chapter. We have two more to go. And if as always, if you have any questions, please let me know. And thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.